everybody, it's Kate from Valero and today I'm going to be discussing how to dial in your loads for your strength training exercises. So let's get started. Now there are three primary ways that you can gauge the load of your strength training exercises. The first of these is using a percentage of your one repetition maximum. This is known as your one RM. So your 1RM refers to the maximum amount of weight that you can lift for one repetition of a particular exercise. This is commonly used in the strength training industry due to its validity and reliability to measure strength for many different exercises. However, for you to know your 1RM for exercises, you have to complete 1RM testing. This involves progressively loading up the weight of a particular movement until you reach the maximum amount of weight that you feel that you can lift for one repetition with good form. Results from this 1RM testing can be used to prescribe loads for future programs and they can also be used to assess strength imbalances, capacities and also the effectiveness of programs. However, it may not always be appropriate to complete 1RM testing frequently, especially in endurance athletes who generally already have large training volumes and excessive fatigue. Additionally, for some exercises, completing 1RM testing just may not be feasible. So an example of this could be a step up, where loading up the barbell and completing a maximal single leg movement may be too high risk of an injury. Therefore, using the percent of 1RM for load management endurance athletes programs may not always be the best option. So option two, or the next way that you can measure the intensity or load of your strength training program is to use rating of perceived exertion, or commonly known as RPE. So this is the same method which is commonly used in endurance training. So let's say, for example, you were prescribed an interval run and the main set of that was to sit at an effort of 8 out of 10 for 10 minutes. In strength training, you could be prescribed one set of six repetitions of squats at a weight that leaves you aiming for an RPE of 8 out of 10. Now, this can be a useful method when it comes to managing load in the gym. However, due to the prevalence of using RPE in endurance training sessions, I find that runners and triathletes can find it confusing and difficult to judge RPE in the gym. This is because generally a high RPE in endurance training is generally associated with a high heart rate and a tough effort. Whereas in the gym, it's associated with a substantial weight on the barbell or a difficult exercise rather than a high heart rate. Therefore, using RPE is not necessarily the best option for managing load in the gym, particularly for endurance athletes. So that leaves us with reps in reserve, or commonly known as RIR. Here, reps simply refers to the number of repetitions of a particular exercise. Reps in reserve is simply your description of how many more repetitions you felt like you could have performed at that given weight with ideal form. Let's go through an example. Let's say I prescribed you one set of six repetitions of squats at 40 kilos and I guessed that weight would leave you or I was aiming to prescribe that weight for you to leave you with two reps in reserve. So you load up the barbell, so your total weight is 40 kilos, you complete the six squats, and now when you re-rack the weight, you wanna think about how many more repetitions you feel like you could have done at that weight with the same technique. Let's say you felt like you could do another three repetitions with good form at that weight before you felt like you were gonna fail. This means that your reps in reserve is three. Now I was aiming to load you up at a weight that would leave you with two reps in reserve, which means that now you need to increase that weight a little bit to hit the target reps in reserve. Using reps in reserve is ideal for endurance athletes as it also accommodates for daily variations in human performance. So many factors can affect our ability to perform every day, including sleep, nutrition, and life stress, amongst other things. By using reps in reserve, the load can be adjusted based off immediate subjective feedback to accommodate for these factors. Recovery from previous endurance and or strength training sessions may also affect your ability to complete a strength training session. So using the reps and reserve method for load management will accommodate for this fatigue and naturally decrease the load. Research has also shown reps and reserve to be a valid measure when it comes to prescribing the intensity of strength training sessions. 
Just one thing to keep in mind is that it's important to note that judging how many reps you have left after a lift becomes more accurate the closer you are to failure of an exercise. So generally it's harder to give a more accurate idea of reps in reserve when there are greater than four reps left in reserve. So next time you're in the gym, give the reps in reserve method a go when it comes to measuring your strength training intensity. Now our strength training app, Valeri, actually includes this reps in reserve method. And based on your input of your reps in reserve, we adjust the weights for you to make sure that you're really nailing the intensity of your strength training exercises. If you want to get started on our app, you can download it and enjoy your free trial starting today. If you have any questions about reps and reserve, make sure you pop them in the comments below and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date for all things strength training for endurance athletes. See you next time.